Okay guys, so I'm going to check out this low boy. This is the fourth or fifth one that I'm going to check out. Hopefully this is the one. I'm about 180 miles from home. So let's go see what this trailer looks like and hopefully I'm gonna buy it. I'm in New Jersey right now, southern part of New Jersey.
so here is my low boy 35 ton this is a 1986 CTA it's ground bearing I'm gonna check this thing out I've never run a low boy I've never disattached one before this is a ground bearing model this is a good deal and it comes with a pony motor so the pony motor hasn't been used in two years I don't even know if it's gonna start up it has electric start and a pull start I got a battery so we're gonna put that in there and we're gonna try to disattach this thing I've never done that before I brought this battery with me but the guy had a forklift so I didn't even need it so now we're gonna put this in there and see if it'll fire up to actually disconnect this first.
was underneath this trailer adjusting the brakes, I could hear that the air tank was leaking. So it should be somewhere right around here. So there's this plate with these four bolts. I should be able to hopefully take that out and it's right there because it's a pain to get to from underneath. Those nuts were supposed to have a tack weld on them to hold them, but two of them had broken welds. So I'd use a vice grip underneath there to hold the other side. So you can see this, this air tank is not in good condition. I think it's leaking somewhere right around here, right there. But either way, that needs to be replaced. They're not that expensive. So it feels pretty loose, but I'm not going to take that out yet until I get all these hoses off of here And then I can take the whole thing out
gonna have to cut this line because it's not turning with the with the nut. Probably end up just replacing this or part of it anyways. Okay, so one last line here. Looks like I'm gonna have the same kind of problem. This one doesn't wanna turn. I don't really have a knife on me, so in a pinch these vice grips will work. They got that little spot right there that they can cut with. Not the greatest, but it'll work. Alright, so this tank should come right out, hopefully. That's just a standard three-quarter pipe thread. It's kind of hard to match up these tanks, so I think I found the right tank at uh, Fleet Pride, but I just want to bring this to just to make sure. So I don't want to drive like 45 minutes to an hour just to figure out that it's not the right one or that they have to order it. I got a brand new tank here. I think this was like $140 maybe. So I really wanted to replace that nipple right there. I got another one right here, it's galvanized, but I just couldn't get that off. If I put it in a bench vise, I could probably get it off, but who knows what it's gonna look like underneath of there. I might be opening up a can of worms. I probably should just replace this, but I'm sure I'll get another five, 10 years out of it. So I'll just put it back together the way it is. Put some new Teflon on there and put it in.
it's not rusty on the inside at all. There's not a piece of rust on the inside, so I think it's fine. Right now I'm working in my field here and there's no tools here, but my garage is down that way, but I can't make it down my hill. I'll bottom out right there because it kind of goes down too quick. And the way that this sits like eight inches off the ground, um, I had another low boy go through there that got stuck one time. So I'm just going to leave it up here because I have plans to rework my driveway. Instead of coming straight up that hill, I'm going to curve it way around, add some distance to it. So I plan on doing that in the next few months and then I can bring my low boy down where I can work on it next to the garage. Got a new fitting to put right in there and it's already got the sealant on it. So both of these glad hands are leaking on the other side. So you can see there's just kind of a nub here. It's so rusted. Same thing with that one. This is the emergency brake here. So let me show you what happens when you hook it up. So I'm gonna release that brake right now and show you. So you can hear that loud and clear coming out of there from the bottom. So the service brake leaks too. Let me show you. It blows a bunch of dust. That's how I knew that it was leaking. See, I'm just hitting a little trolley on here. It's leaking a lot. So both those need to be replaced. I got new glad hands here. 
and I got like a through the bulkhead kind of fitting. So first things first, I got to get these out of here and I don't have plasma cutter or anything like that. So I'm just going to use a cordless grinder. I'm missing two boards here and as tempting as it is to just go and grab a couple two by eights out of my wood pile I'm gonna mill up some wood for that and mill up some hemlock because eventually I want to do the rest of the trailer in hemlock right now it's oak but I don't really need oak I don't really have any oak either to mill up so we'll just do hemlock for now for those two and eventually we'll get to this we'll do it all in hemlock
should just about do it. It's a small little hemlock log. But I should be able to get two boards out of it. guys well the moment of truth is here so enough working on this thing let's go haul something with it so my excavator is on a job right now it's getting pretty lonely it needs to come back here so I just finished up this job so I just did my pre-trip here and we're ready to go
All right, guys, so that was my first time actually pulling a load with this truck. It did pretty good. This N14 is pretty powerful. I was going up a really steep hill at one point, and it was just chugging along. Trailer did good. Excavator is still there. Put that little boot up there for the turbo. Everything seems to be working good. So let's talk about some weight. So this truck is around 16,000 pounds. The trailer is about 19.5. That excavator is about 29,000 with that bucket on it. So all together, what's that? Around 65 or something? Summer's around there. So that's gross. So I only got 15,000 more pounds before I gotta get an overweight permit because 80,000 is the limit for truck and trailer combined. Everything grossed out. 80,000 in the United States is where we're at. Anything beyond that and you need an overweight permit. So this trailer seems to be pretty nice. I really like it. I've always wanted a low boy. I'm just really fascinated by the way they are. I really want to take those panels off the back so you can see the wheels. But at the same time, this really is a nice platform to put something. You could put a skid steer here. If I reposition this excavator so that the boom wasn't hanging over, you could easily put a skid steer or a mini excavator or something like that on there. I got plenty of room to move forward here. So I know there's a lot of guys that are going to say that I should have never got a ground bearing trailer and that I should always get a non ground bearing. I totally agree. I'm with you on that, but they're a lot more money. I did look at one, but it needed so much work. It needed like a month worth of work. The whole thing needed to be rebuilt. But this one for 6,700, that's a pretty good deal with the pony motor because I was either going to have to do that or pay like 2,500 for the wet kit parts and then install the wet kit, which I still may do eventually. But for right now, this gets me going um, and I didn't really need to do anything. Just kind of hook up and go. So one thing I'm going to work on is making some sort of jack back here to keep this neck up in the air. Because when you unhook it, it wants to just drag on the ground. You could put blocks in here. And I was doing that. And with the combination of that and dropping the airbags and raising them, you can kind of adjust to where you need to be. So that works for now. But I want to come up with a permanent solution. But I also want to put a pintle hitch on the back right here. So I don't want to impede that. Um, I may also put some ramps up here to, to ramp up to the fifth wheel plate. Those non-ground bearing trailers are really nice because they pivot on themselves and they scissor up and down to raise and lower it. And a nice thing about those is that you can actually adjust the height of them. Like if you come up to railroad tracks, you can kind of raise them up. Um, that is really nice about those. But other than that, you can spread the weight out on the jack. They already put a bigger plate on the jack. And um, you can you can put some cribbing underneath that if you get into some really soft spots. Overall, a non-ground bearing trailer would have been a lot better, but this will definitely do the trick for me because I'm not going to be moving machines every day, and I'm not transporting stuff for other people, so it doesn't really matter for me. So I definitely want to repaint this whole trailer and make it look really nice, but. The way I kind of look at things is that they kind of need to earn their keep first. Um, so once I figure out that this trailer is everything I want for a while, then I'll go ahead and lay it up and paint the whole thing and redo some, some little things. But structurally, it's good. It's so much better than all the other trailers I was looking at. There was a few times where I hired people to move stuff with a low boy and they always wanted 175 an hour. So if you think about it like that, this is actually quite a bit of a money maker if I wanted to transport for other people, but I probably won't do that. Um, I eventually found somebody that did it for 125 an hour, but even that is pretty good money to be making. You know, if you're doing it yourself, you're basically making that money. So that that's that's a pretty substantial savings. All you'd have to do is move things like 10 times a year and trailer pretty much pays for itself this truck has a 390 rear ends 3.9 ratio um, that's actually pretty powerful for what I'm doing it's perfect 
um, and I can still reach like 65, 70 on the highway. Actually, I can do more than that. I think it's 75 or 80 on the highway with this little 10 speed. It's, it's not a bad combination. I'd rather have an 18 speed. So one of the main reasons that I've been trying to get a low boy is the low center of gravity. Um, since it's so low to the ground, it definitely handles a lot better. Otherwise you're sticking way up in the air. And I can also transport that crane. I think that crane's right at about uh, 11 foot six or so. So you have to have that on a low boy to transport it. Um, so my deck over trailer would handle this excavator and anything else that I have except for the crane just because it's sitting too high. But I just really don't like loading three feet in the air. The way this is, you start off on the ramps and you're eight inches off the ground. That's really nice. It's so much safer for loading and so much safer for driving down the roads. All right, so this is kind of the introduction to this trailer. I'm gonna do some more work on it. I'm gonna transport some more stuff. I think it's worth, every time I transport something big, I'll make a little video about it. My channel could probably use some smaller videos that are kind of faster paced and you know, I always have the long videos. So a couple videos here and there of transporting stuff wouldn't be too bad. I'm actually gonna go transport another excavator tomorrow. So I'll catch you guys on that one. Mm -hmm.